friends today i am going to start to record a series of lectures on nausea and vomiting what i am going to do i am going to start to record series of lectures that regards to nausea and vomiting my dear friends what i am going to do is i am going to split my whole discussion into five different parts what i am going to do i am going to split the whole discussion on nausea and vomiting into five different parts so let me try to tell what i am going to discuss in all these parts so in the first part i am going to discuss about some basic definitions that are related to nausea and vomiting and along with this in the first part i also differentiate nausea as well as vomiting along in the first part i also differentiate nausea and vomiting so once i do this foundation concept in your mind then i move on discussing to the second part that includes the basic neuroanatomy which includes basic neuro anatomy so why do we require basic neuro anatomy what is the purpose to understand the basic neuro anatomy my dear friends as you all know that if you really wants to get nausea and if you really wants to get vomiting in the brain we are having some special type of center and special type of zone so where is this special type of center and where is this special type of zone if you exactly wants to point out if you exactly wants to locate in brain then you must require some basic neuro anatomical knowledge such that you can exactly point out this so once i discuss this second part i move on to the third part that includes that includes the discussion about some peripheral triggers some central triggers and different pathological conditions that arise in different organ systems that ultimately leads to the stimulation of this vomiting center and the stimulation of chemoreceptor trigger zone what do i mean all this see in the fourth part what i am going to discuss is i am going to discuss about different types of peripheral triggers different types of central triggers and different pathological situations that arises in different types of organ systems that all ultimately leads to the stimulation of that special type of center called vomiting center and that special type of zone called chemoreceptor trigger zone which then causes nausea as well as vomiting so once i complete this third part i move on discussing to the fourth part that includes the differential diagnosis of nausea as well as vomiting so in the final part i am going to discuss about treatment my dear friends we are having different classes of drugs like antihistamines and your dopamine antagonists and your serotonin antagonists so we are going to discuss all these different classes of drugs in the fifth part that ultimately helps us to treat specifically vomiting but not nausea why because in the later lecture i will tell you the neurobiology of nausea is very less understood when compared to vomiting we are having a very beautiful theories that explains exactly what is going to happen in vomiting but whereas we don't know we are having a little information that is regarded to nausea so whatever the drugs that are designed whatever the different class of the drugs that we are currently having they are mostly involved in treating vomiting rather than nausea okay and my dear friends let's start the discussion i will wrap all this and i mainly concentrate first of all to the first part then once i complete this i move on to the later parts so let's try to have the concept of the basic definitions so first of all i am asking you friends do you know what is nausea yes before i tell you that 
nausea. Before I tell you that, nausea is derived from Greek word. It is derived from Greek word which has a meaning called boat. Which has a meaning called boat. Whereas vomiting is derived not from Greek. It is derived from Latin. It is derived from Latin words such as emesis and vomitorium. We keep on hearing a word called emesis. Then what do you mean by vomitorium? What is vomitorium? Do you know what is what do you mean by vomitorium? See, before I tell you that, vomitorium is a singular word. It is a singular word. If you want to tell this word in a plural, then it is called as vomitoria. Then it is called as vomitoria. Okay, let me try to tell what is vomitorium or what is vomitoria. My dear friends, in ancient Romans and Greeks architectures, whenever they are designing amphitheaters and stadiums, what they do is they try to put some big entrances or some big exits such that through these big entrances or through these big exits there is passage of large crowds there is passage of large crowds into amphitheaters or into stadiums again what do i mean by this See, vomitorium is nothing but, or vomitoria is nothing but, in ancient Greeks and Roman architectures, vomitorium or vomitoria were designed to provide rapid egress for the large crowds at amphitheaters and stadium. So, my point is, why I am discussing all this in context to vomiting? See, vomiting is also the same. Vomiting is the situation where there is rapid exit of gastric contents through the esophagus, through the mouth to outside. So when it is compared to vomitorium, it is actually looking like similar. So due to this, so due to this similarity, the actual word of vomiting, the Greeks derived the actual word of vomiting from vomitorium as it is having the same mechanism. Okay. This is the first point. Coming to the second point, and my dear friends, the second point is, if you really want to define nausea, first of all, I will tell you what is the simplest way. And then if you really understand the simplest definition, then I try to define in technical way. So the simplest way to define nausea is, it is a desire to vomit. What it is? It is a desire to vomit. But who is making this desire? what is that center and what is that zone that is present in the brain which is actually making this desire so i will tell you what is that center and what is that zone in a huge manner in my later lectures you just confines to that that there is a center called vomiting center and there is a zone called chemoreceptor trigger zone that is actually involved in making this desire okay nausea is a desire to vomit it is a sensation to have vomiting. So then what do you mean by vomiting? Vomiting is nothing but it is accomplishing the desire. It is accomplishing the desire which you have. Firstly, what I am trying to tell you is before you actually get vomit, before you actually get vomiting, we are having a desire to vomit. So who is making this desire? This desire is created by vomiting center and chemoreceptor trigger zone. This is called nausea. Then what do you mean by vomiting? If you really accomplish this desire, if you really come, if you really make this desire to come true, then it is called vomiting. This is the simplest way to define nausea as well as vomiting. Then coming to the technicality part, what do you mean by nausea? If you really wants to tell you, in technical way what is nausea see nausea is the conscious recognition of it is the conscious recognition of subconscious excitation subconscious excitation in the area of medulla i will tell you what is that area of medulla yes 
in the area of medulla which is closely associated with which is closely associated with vomiting center then what do you mean by vomiting friends vomiting is nothing but it is the evacuation of it is evacuation of the gastric contents gastric contents due to the irritation of upper gastrointestinal tract by some special type of irritative impulses and by excessive distension okay let me try to define or let me try to explain all this okay what is nausea so friends nausea is the conscious recognition of subconscious excitation in the area of the medulla that is closely associated with vomiting center what do i mean by this it's nothing but if you are getting nausea it indicates that subconsciously in the area of the medulla there is some excitation mechanism is going on which is closely associated with vomiting center so due to this excitation mechanism in the area of the medulla that is closely associated with vomiting center you can feel this excitation if you are really recognizing this excitation if you are really experiencing this excitation this experience this experience or this recognition process is called as nausea then what do you mean by vomiting vomiting is nothing but it is the evacuation of your gastric contents it is the evacuation of gastric contents why there is evacuation due to the irritation of upper gastrointestinal tract due to some irritation of upper gastrointestinal tract or due to excessive distension of upper gastrointestinal tract so this is my simplest and my technical definitions of nausea and vomiting so going to the fourth point friends nausea is often a prodromal sensation of vomiting it is a prodromal sensation of vomiting so what do you mean by prodrome friends prodrome is nothing but it is an early symptom that occurs before the onset of disease or before the onset of illness see friends prodrome is not just related to only nausea and vomiting but in different types of diseases and different types of illness we are going to see prodrome for example in parkinson's disease loss of smell occurs before it see friends in parkinson's disease there is loss of smell which is considered to be as prodrome because before actually before you actually develop parkinson's disease there is loss of smell so this symptom that develops earlier before the onset of disease or before the onset of illness that type of early symptom is called as prodrome so as far as nausea is concerned it is considered as a prodromal sensation of it is a prodromal sensation of vomiting friends vomiting starts with salivation and sensation of nausea okay why do we require salivation friends whenever you are having nausea consider whenever you have this prodromal sensation called nausea whenever you are having nausea what this nausea is going to do is this nausea is going to give signals to salivary glands this nausea is going to give the signals to the salivary glands such that whenever the salivary glands receives these special type of signals from nausea what they are going to do is they get over stimulated whenever they get over stimulated they increase their secretions they increase their secretions nothing but they increase salivations friends do you know what saliva contains yes saliva saliva is going to contain buffer so what is that buffer that buffer is nothing but bicarbonates that buffer is nothing but bicarbonates okay what do i mean by all this friends whenever you are having nausea whenever you you are having this prodrome due to this prodrome 
there is some signals going to salivary glands that are present in your submaxillary and submandibular region. So whenever these salivary glands receives these special type of signals due to nausea, they get overstimulated. Whenever they get overstimulated, they increase their secretions. It means they increase their salivations. It means they increase their bicarbonates. So whenever there is increasing, whenever there is increased amount of bicarbonates, these bicarbonates are going to coat your esophagus. These bicarbonates which are produced by salivary glands, they are going to coat your esophagus. So once the esophagus have been coated, before you actually get vomiting, then it is going to protect your esophagus. So okay, if this nausea results to vomiting, so whenever your gastric contents, whenever your gastric contents such as food particles with acid is going to pass through this esophagus, then the acid that is present in the gastric content is not going to damage your esophagus. Why? Because previously we have been coated with bicarbonates, we have been coated with saliva, we have been coated with secretions. So due to this mechanism of salivation, we are protecting our esophagus not to be destroyed. We are protecting our esophagus not to be damaged. So this nausea not only acting as a prodrome, but it is also acting as a protective mechanism to your esophagus. This is one of the most important mechanism. Friends, my last and final point that I am going to put in this lecture is, do you think nausea occurs in all cases? What I am asking you, do you think in each and every case of vomiting, we are going to see nausea? No. Friends, no, occasionally in some cases, nausea or its prodromal sensation is not going to occur. What do I mean by this? Okay, I will rub this. In some cases, occasionally, nausea is not going to occur. Why? Because previously I am telling that there is special type of center that is present in your brain and we call this center as vomiting center. If you really want to get nausea, then this vomiting center needs to be stimulated. Do you think entire vomiting center needs to be stimulated? No. We are having certain portions of vomiting center that needs to be stimulated. So in most of the cases, in most of these cases, these portions are going to be stimulated. But in some cases, occasionally, these portions are not stimulated. Whenever these portions, whenever these specific portions of vomiting center are not stimulated, then you are not going to get nausea. We call these portions as special portions of vomiting center. Mostly these special portions get stimulated, but in some cases they are not stimulated. So whenever they are not stimulated, you are not having nausea. So due to this, I can tell that mostly vomiting starts with sensation of nausea, but occasionally vomiting is not followed by the prodromal sensation of nausea due to the reason that certain portions of vomiting center occasionally they are not involved in stimulation. Okay, friends, this is the end of my discussion and in the next lecture, I will tell you where is this vomiting center and where is the chemoreceptor trigger zone exactly in your brain. Exactly, you can point in your brain where is this centers and where is that zone. So, I will end this lecture here. Friends, if you like this video, please share your comments and please share this video. Thank you.